both chamber members. I'm Isabel Renault, president and CEO of the St. Johns County Chamber of Commerce, and I want to welcome you to this chamber conversation. Today, our chamber of conversation is to better understand the personal and commercial property insurance market in Florida and what you members can do to try to control the cost. Our expert today to better help us understand this volatility is Doug Wiles, president of longtime chamber member Herbie Watt Insurance and also former member of the Florida House of Representatives. So Doug, thank you so much for joining us today. And I wanna welcome you to the chamber conversation Thank you, Isabel, and it's good to be with you. I, I hope in the next few minutes we can answer at least a few questions on a very complex matter. That's right. And and I think it's really important for the commercial property as well, since we have uh, our members own their property very often, our business members. So I'm excited about trying to provide some insight for them. So thank you. So first, mm -hmm. let's start because we have a lot of questions to go through. The first one is that I want to ask you, we all know that Florida is one of the trickiest insurance markets in the country, both for personal and property and commercial property insurance owners. So why is Florida so volatile? Well, the short answer to that is storms. Uh, there were 19 significant events across the United States last year alone, hurricanes, fires, hail, tornadoes, freezes. Uh, but Florida, because it sticks out like a sore thumb in the middle of Hurricane Alley, uh, seems to get the brunt of a lot of those. Although we typically don't see freezes and tornadoes much, uh, goodness, uh, probably one of the most significant storms in United States history in terms of damage done was Hurricane Ian that struck southwest Florida, one of our more populated areas of the state. And uh, I think when all is said and done, we will have paid more in claims uh, to the survivors of Hurricane Ian uh, than any other storm at all. Really? Wow. The the other is litigation. Um, I, I the the numbers that I think are most significant, and, and they have to do with homeowners insurance. But uh, Florida had eight percent of all homeowners claims in number of claims filed across the country. Eight percent. But 81% of all the claims payment were paid to those in Florida. And of that 81%, about 71% of that was in attorney fees. So we've got an issue where we've got to deal with the legal cost, hopefully without affecting those that have a significant and a true need to approach an attorney uh, in a time of need. And then finally, uh, as a result of those two things, we've got insurance companies exiting from the market, mm -hmm. uh, some voluntarily and others because they have no choice. Mm -hmm. Of the eight insurance company insolvencies across the country in 2022, five of those involved insurance companies that did business almost exclusively in the state of Florida. So it's a huge issue. And unfortunately, we don't have a lot of easy answers to resolving those. It seems that all of those that are driving the cost higher are really out of our control. So what can chamber members do? What can we do? Uh, really not a lot we can do because the drivers are the storms that we have and the litigation that seems to be out of control. But a couple of things that can happen or that you can do is to really try to mitigate uh, your losses. Uh, make sure that your property is well maintained, particularly your roofs, the plumbing, uh, the electrical systems, and the overall condition of the property. Um, some companies uh, that get larger also have a way to uh, reserve monies for future use so that you know that the roof in 10, 15, 20 years is going to need either maintenance or replacement determine what that cost might be over a period of time and set some money aside. Thing with HVAC units, they're gonna last seven to 10 years typically, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. So, you know, figure out what that is, set it aside and catch that before it becomes a serious issue. All those are easy things to do, but goodness, with all the other issues we have, 
uh, finances are sometimes the hardest to do. So uh, it is a little bit of a, of a challenge to make sure that we do the right thing. Mm -hmm. I, I think the other thing we can talk about, Isabel, is what happened in the special sessions for the legislature. Yes, please. Because they attempted to resolve those issues as well. Not sure that in most cases they're going to be immediately effective, but uh, there has been some effort there in terms of reducing the cost of attorney's fees and some of the other interesting things that are going around, particularly on the homeowner's market. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, actually, what you mentioned about uh, mitigating, uh, mitigating the, the loss is really important for specifically our members, specifically downtown St. Augustine. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, We are actually going to do a topic about uh, storm mitigation for the businesses downtown to see uh, what can be done. Um, there are loans that SBA has put in place for simple things for them to mitigate their loss and, and prepare for the next, next storm. So uh, I'm glad that you mentioned that because uh, we are going in the right direction. We're helping them with that. Um, so what uh, homeowners, um, property owners, um, business owners that are property owner can expect as far as the rates for the long term and short term. I, I I'm afraid to, uh, that I know the answer to that question already, but I want to ask it anyway. Well, let's start at the big level first. Um, uh, reinsurance, which is insurance coverage for insurance companies, um, it mm -hmm. is is huge. It is a worldwide operation. Typically, when you think about Lloyd's of London, uh, the next phase that we in the business think about is reinsurance. There's a lot of companies in Bermuda, offshore, we call it. Um, but at any rate, they rely on their experience, not only in Florida and the United States, but across the world. Uh, because of all of these significant events like tsunamis in the Pacific, in Japan, the war in Ukraine, um, reinsurance premiums have gone up 37% or expected to do so in the coming year. Uh, and that's the largest increase since Hurricane Andrew in 30 years. So one of the things that the legislature attempted to do was to make reinsurance um, a little more affordable by providing um, uh, some reinsurance coverage through the Hurricane Catastrophe Fund, and to do so at a lower cost than most insurance companies can get from these international reinsurance funds. And part of the, the legislature's effort was to require these insurance companies to reduce their premiums. Now, we're talking primarily about homeowners insurance because that tends to be the most volatile form We've got problems with property insurance when it comes to commercial structures. Because Florida is such a volatile area, most insurance companies, whether they insure homes or businesses for property coverage, are very much dependent on those rates and reinsurance in order to meet their financial obligations. So that when you have a claim, you can file it, and the insurance company has the ability to pay it. So... I think we're going to continue for a while to see premium increases simply because there's very little way we can control that. Now, you know, maybe not 37 percent, although we've seen some pretty significant premium increases so far. But perhaps as some insurance companies are able to take advantage of the state provided reinsurance, again, that's mostly in the homeowners lines. Uh, then we may see some mitigation or or trend of of insurance premiums leveling off. I think the most startling thing is that not only Florida, but around the Gulf of Mexico, Texas, Louisiana, to some extent, Mississippi and Alabama, and certainly Florida, have some of the highest property insurance premiums in the country as a direct result of these storms. Yeah. But the other half of this is what we can do about these attorney fees mm -hmm. uh, and the cost of that. And, and that has to do with liability insurance. Um, and I think the legislature did some things to begin to crack down on that. Uh, number one, um, a few years back, the Supreme Court, through a challenge, allowed attorneys to multiply the 
basic fees that they charge for insurance claims by three to five times, depending on the severity of the claim. Mm -hmm. So one thing the legislature did was pass a law uh, that would eliminate uh, fee multipliers for property insurance claims. They also eliminated an assignment of benefit cases. That's where, uh, a say, a roofer would approach a commercial or a homeowner and say, your roof looks bad. Let me go up and check it. And oh, by the way, if you just sign this document, uh, I will take care of the claim for you. And then the next thing the, the roofer does is go to the attorney and it becomes a a real opportunity to make a few bucks. It's no wonder that this was such an aggressive program mm -hmm. by many attorneys, or some, I should say, throughout the state of Florida. And then finally, there was something called a one-way attorney fee. Uh, that is that um, if uh, your insurance company lost a court case uh, or a challenge, uh, even if it was only by a dollar, the insurance companies were required to pay the attorney fees for the plaintiff. Wow. Uh, and th they've pretty much eliminated that now with, again, some legislation. So it was all sort of, in terms of this uh, attorney fees, it was all sort of couched against the insurance company and very much in favor of attorneys. And the challenge was, let's figure out how to do that without affecting those that really needed to go to an attorney. Wow. Uh, as you said earlier, it's a complex uh, uh, issue. Well, um, I think we've covered a lot. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, I think a couple of things um, might be helpful here. Um, part of what the legislature did in their unprecedented two special sessions, one right after yes. uh, the election, which was kind of interesting, they did require any insurance company that uses the state provided reinsurance, that is insurance coverage for insurance companies, to reduce their rates that they charge no later than May the 1st. So our first indication as to whether some of these things might be working would be on renewals for homeowners policy that are effective after May the 1st. Now, again, that doesn't apply to business members, but if there's some success there, then it may be something that we can, for lack of better words, take to the bank and use mm -hmm. for help with commercial property owners, too. So I have a feeling we'll have another chamber conversation with you sometime <laughs> in June. <laughs> well, let's sure hope it's let's hope it's better news than where we right? are Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Doug, for joining us uh, again. Doug Wiles with president of Herbie Wiles Insurance for joining us today regarding the insurance uh, issue in the state of Florida for commercial and personal property owners. Thank you again for having us. Chamber members, thank you for joining us for this chamber conversation. And Doug, is there um, a contact number for Herbie Wiles Insurance if anybody wants to reach out to you? Certainly. Uh, it's 829-2201 is our telephone number here locally. But I would suggest as well that if uh, uh, a, a chamber member has a agent that they are working with, that they are comfortable with, follow up with them. And, and uh, chances are that they've got this information. If not, we're happy to help. Thank you. Thank you, Doug, again. And thank you, Chamber members, for this Chamber conversation. Well, I'll come back with another one soon.